Hi everyone, this is Kona, and I'm going to talk about the project for planning. So what do you need to do? So hopefully you read through um, the project for information and kind of gotten a good idea of uh, what to watch out for and what you need to be doing. So to start with, what you need to do is think about what types of schools that you want to be looking at. So for this one to decide the types of schools, you need to open the spreadsheet with all of the Illinois schools and then decide which ones you want to look at. Now, I went ahead and found Argena, so I just did a control find and found Argena because my daughter is uh, in Argena Elementary School. So I'm going to use Argena, which is a medium-sized elementary school. What that means is I then need to find, uh, let's see, was it 35? Is that right? Do, 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 do. Yes, it doesn't say, but at some point I will need to find 35 uh, of that size school. Now you don't have to determine that right now at this point, but basically that's what it's deciding is that all of the schools I'm going to look at are medium size elementary schools. So I would just kind of go through and, oh, here's another medium elementary school, Putnam County, um, another one, medium elementary Midland, uh, and medium elementary Lincoln. So you can kind of get a feel for this is how you would find, you know, or figure out. Or you could figure out, you know, that I want to do high schools. So I want to do a medium-sized high school or a large high school. Uh, it's up to you to pick, but you do need to pick the size. So that's the first thing you need to do is make sure that you pick. If you want, you can create a copy of this. So if you have a Gmail account, um, you can go to File and make a copy and you can make a copy of this and then you can actually um, organize it and sort it out you know the way you want to find the schools you want to use now you don't have to do that for this part that's just kind of I guess I'm foreshadowing that's what's coming for this part you just need to identify the type of school so grade school middle school high school or district and the common characteristic which normally is going to be like district size which is small medium large so just so you get a feel for that. The next thing you need to do is identify the response variable. So identify that response variable you want to look at from the data. So what the response variable is, this is, make sure to go back and read this, uh, the response variable, uh, sorry, let's see, this is it right here. So out of all the data that's available, choose one thing that you think will be a good measure of how well a school does. So the response variable is one thing that you think will be a good measure of how well the school does. Uh, but what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and open up that Illinois report card data. Now remember, I'm going to use Argenta. I'm going to use elementary school and do a search. Okay, so what you need to do from here is to figure out what measure you think is that one measure that determines the school success. So what do you think is a school success? Uh, for an elementary school, I could see considering it maybe being a park score. So maybe it's that composite, so that overall for the school, maybe how many students are in green. So how many students met or exceeded um, the uh, park assessment score. So that could be, that's what I think is a measure of how well a school does. That's just my example. Uh, if you were to pick a high school, so that is different if you go, let's just go back home. So let's use our Jenna High School. Okay. And look at academic progress. Um, you can see the park score, which doesn't really make sense here, uh, but you will also see SAT. So here you can get percentage of 11th grader scoring uh, at each of the performance levels. So here you've got um, the number who meets and exceeds. So you could use that one right there. Um, participation rate, mm, achievement gap maybe, yuck. I don't know, but you can kind of see. Maybe freshman on track. Is that a good indication of how well uh, the school is doing? early college coursework. How about graduation rate? Now to me, graduation rate seems to sound pretty good. Um, so percentage of students who graduated within four to seven years. Um, here's four year graduation rate. 
and then you would have to look down. There's the school. So for your graduation rate for 2017 is 88 percent. So, okay. So maybe graduation rate is for high school what you see as a measure of success. Maybe it's college readiness. So ACT uh, designates students with an ACT score of 21 or higher. So maybe that's what you determine to be, you know, I think students are successful if they've got, you know, that higher ACT score. So these are just things uh, you can think about. Uh, also, if you just click on overall academic progress, you can see like here, SAT 29% proficient. So what I did for that one, so here I was on school snapshot and I clicked on academic progress and then instead of clicking on these individually, um, which you could also do from here, I just looked at, oh, 29% are proficient. Uh, let's see, 85% of freshmen are on track. 88% graduation rate, 41% college readiness, 64% um, need post-secondary remediation. So any of these you could possibly consider to be, so remember what we're considering it to be, is that response variable. And that's what you think is a good measure of how well a school does. So which one of these do you think is a good measure of how well a school does to prepare a student to be successful? What variable? Once you determine that, so that's this one, identify the response variable you want to look at uh, and, and it can indicate why you think it's an important response variable. So remember, that's just one thing. Then what you're going to do is choose seven predictor variables that you think, or at least seven predictor variables that you think help to predict the value of the response variable. So in this case, um, attendance is a predictor variable. Uh, if you can't get the material if you're not in school, so the higher the attendance rate, or the more people, um, the more people will be prepared for the next level. So for that one, what you do, uh, you can click on school environment, and you can say, I think the average class size. Um, I will say don't use total days in school because every school has to have basically the same number of days of school. But maybe you want to use average class size because maybe you think average class size uh, impacts students' uh, graduation rate. Maybe you think dropout rate. Well, that, those would be related, right? Let's click on students. So in this case, maybe you're thinking the percent of in, of low income students. So I think the number of low income students impacts graduation rate. I think the number of students with disabilities impacts graduation rate. Uh, I think student attendance, student mobility, uh, whichever one of these you find interesting. Maybe it's a teacher thing. So maybe you think that it is uh, the retention of teachers. So if we can keep teachers longer, then their uh, students are more likely to do better. Maybe it's teacher attendance. You think that if student if teachers are there, then the students are going to get a better education. Uh, maybe it's percent with master's degrees. Uh, you can also look at administrator administrators, which I'll be honest, I really doubt they have to do with it. But you know, whatever. If you want to make the case, uh, then you've got some high school highlights in general. These aren't going to get you much, uh, and you don't need the retired tests. If you'd like more information, you can also click on this report card PDF and it's coming up it's coming it's coming and you can see this really breaks it down a lot more so like student mobility by male female um, racial ethnic background instructional setting um, parental contact so maybe you think uh, parental contact has to do with how successful students are or uh, in graduating Maybe you think eighth graders passing Algebra 1. Uh, but here's some extra and a little bit more in-depth information. So that might help you to pick a variable as well. So there are your different options. You can actually look at the PDF, or you can just kind of click through and look at these. But the big thing what you're doing is you're coming up with those seven predictor variables. And those predictor variables are variables that you think predict the response variable. So this one. Well, this one, predictor variables, uh, predict that response variable. So once again, you are not collecting the data. Do not collect the data until I have given the green light. But what this is, is just kind of your talk through of this is how you come up with your plan. Uh, after I green light your plan, 
you will then actually collect that data. So then you will actually go to the schools. You'll actually decide on your schools. So you'll start back here. You'll decide on the actual names of the schools. So you'll put those in your mini tab file. Then you'll go to the school and then you'll just start saying that if you're using SAT maybe as your um, response variable, then you'll find um, the response, you'll find the 29% or whatever that percentage is for SAT proficiency, and you'll put 29 into Minitab for that specific one. Um, and I'll go into more of that later, but this just kind of shows and hopefully gives you an example of what you need to be doing. I hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions.